is going to be tricky. This thing goes, I want to know where it's at under the mountain. All right, pass them sliders. All right. Sliders? Yeah, you know what? You might leave those right behind you because that room over there is a little tight. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you equipment. Once you set those down, here's this. That just goes on the sliders, I think. Does this go? Just by the sliders is fine. If Arlen needs your help, he'll tell you. He's just on the laser. Ouch. Is that Gary? Keep your legs straight. Yeah, just like that. And then your butt will hit a bump again and you stay above it. What do you think? Big bump can be there? I don't know. We opened it up quite a bit there. Yeah, that's, it's got... It's just weird it's right here. Inches of space you can stay, there for I'd sure. stay, si stay sideways. Oh. It's a little weird, huh? Dust in my eyes. Yeah. You can move in a little more. You sit up, and then you're gonna want to go down. So what's uh, that way? There's a little. There's a crawl. And uh, they're on it. They're on it. Yeah. Who's them? Arlen has the. He's going that way with the disto first. Oh, you're mapping already. Give me a second, Oscar. No. Yeah, it goes that way, down, and there's a crawl that way. Hmm. I mean, it, there's so many formations in this cave that you miss. Yeah. We were able to go slow since we weren't laboring like you guys. Oh. So, but, um, I saw some really nice ones. I was like, wow. There's some that are easy to miss. I mean... And that, you know, the biggest room, there's some big ones down at the bottom. Yep, and they there's a lot of floor-to-ceiling connectors. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. <laughs> that wasn't well, awesome. Place. That wasn't awesome. I thought you were going under it. Uh, I was log rolling, but thank you for your concern. Gary, I, you might go feet first. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I do. So, it kind of goes straight up, I don't know. Is Kim satisfied with the tape? Oh yeah, he's he's overwhelmed. Is he um he's sufficiently dramatic. Is he out there um posting, yes. Posting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna call that little puddle we found Looper Lake. There's a little lake on on the upslope. But you know, it shouldn't be there this time of year. This was the first day this cave had ever been entered, explored, and mapped by humans. Because of this, the floor was still quite unsettled as no one had ever walked on its rubbly surface. Rocks shifted under our feet, presenting a bit of danger as we hobbled around the boulderous floor. Here, the mapping crew is following a small tunnel to a larger passage which continues down the hill. It reminds me right here of risky business. Yeah. And at the other, the, the really steep one, Way over there, the steepest one that Little Red River. No, in this where it's just a tube full of. Crap. Yeah, yeah, that's like this. This is even steeper. This is awful. This one. It opens up the idea upslope, downslope. We'll see where it lays on the lidar yeah. with Gary's projections. But that's what I'm excited about is it at least is proof of concept that there is caves up here. We hit the jackpot quite the, the soon. Fact that that's the only entrance. Right. Um, we we hit the jackpot yeah. like the moment we started looking up here. Well, like like Arlen was saying, it's like it seemed like the old time cave. They found like just found it all right here. Right, all the big ones, yeah. just Olds and Little Red River and. And this generation is left with 
No, but this year we definitely nothing is not what we found. Well, you guys are pretty um, effective at. Maybe it's the era of roto hammers, but you've been pretty effective at extending those caves to sometimes the best parts. Well, the, this kind of required some roto hammer to get into, right? Yeah, you could have got in without it, but th- you would have just been sitting on nubs. It's not a long drop, but there's a drop. And there's a lot of this too. It's not that far. <laughs> there's a lot of choke points. <laughs> There's a lot of choke points like this. There are lava choke points that yeah. the lava still got around that are that are interesting. This is a, this is a cool looking tube. Right? It is a cool looking tube, and you can get in here too. So like this stuff, Ken's never going in. No, 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 he didn't. But Ken uh, came with us in here. He'll do anything. Yeah. This is neat. This is one of those caves, though, that, like, I guess I'm not, I'm not, uh, like, scared that it's going to be overrun with cave, with people because it's just, like... It's, it's a bad location. Away. Yeah, it's a bad location. Yeah. And the entrance, there are people that will go... Look, look at this actual stairway here. These steps. Yeah. It's uh, it's a bad location that has a limited amount of time you can go in it. That has uh, do you want? It's a bad location, and the entrance isn't that fun. The monster, yeah. Also better than other ones that I thought of. Pandora is cool. Pandora is like an alien planet. This is what this is, and it's big. I, I like and don't Arlen. open Pandora's box, right? Right. I liked Arlen's uh, idea for that, just that blob that I like, the thing from another planet. Oh, right. Dude, I got some sweet pics of that. I put lights all over it and made it look like a monster. I believe it looks like a monster. This is a cool package. Yeah, I forgot that it was this nice. It does at some point die and not be as nice, but... Yeah, when I was working on the entrance, Jacob came down here, which was, I was surprised because I, I looked but missed it completely the other day, which is fine. I, it's, I, I'm excited to see the over-under. I can't wait for when Calvin, um, you know, makes the uh, gate for this. Yeah, they're outside working on it. They're working on the, they've got some logs and trees and rocks, some bat spray. How much further past this pinch? Boy, this lava sidewall is very thin. If you, if you grab some of it, it goes. How much further? I don't remember. This feels about as far as I went. So you're calling it a pinch. It's probably the end. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm not curious. There's, yeah, okay, so it barrels down a few of those and then ends. It's it's nice and steep, though, Oscar, if you want to have a good time. <laughs> well, I always up for a good time. It transitions from this rubble, original rubble, to breakdown. In the front, on the laser, is Arlen. Then Gary on the handheld tablet. And I am behind everyone, closely following Oscar, as we continue down the clunky lava falls, deeper and deeper below the surface. This passage is so steep, you can only partially walk. You have to lean and kind of walk down the lava surface, as if it is a poorly designed ladder. It's difficult to keep one's footing, as all these rocks serve as potential ankle breakers. Another stairway to hell. Oscar, what's your guess as to the gained and lost elevation of this cave? 800 feet? No. I mean, maybe 200? It's pretty steep. We did measure the uh, dot bottom 
Top to bottom, linear. That's outstanding. Right. And that's your steepness, basically. I can do most of that um, with the wrong tools to figure out the, the steepness of the the angle, the actual angle. And the Second part last. 1,500 feet at 15. See, I know, I know, I think I know the steepness of it, the, like with the clinometer, and then I could guess based on the length of the cave. I'm gonna do that. I can't do it in my head though. Right, of anything, a graph. That's true, you're right. As this is the very end of the day, we are coming to the very end of the very last passage. Everyone is tired as we sit and wait for Arlen to finish on the laser in the bottom room of the brand new cave. Some of the lava, as it cooled and hardened thousands of years ago, broke and fell from the ceiling onto the floor. There are intermittent piles of loose rock that we must crawl over as we continue down the passage. My favorite part about a cave is when you're glad it ends. You're like, oh, thank goodness. It's lo right. It's loose. It's loose breakdown. Is there anything else we need to survey? <laughs> the yeah. There's a a little small nope. offshoot that goes right back by near the entrance. Yeah, I mean, it's like 20, 20 feet at best. May it'll be longer on the disto because there's a a room you can't get in. The return upward is very steep and difficult to walk on the loose rocks. However, it is still easier than going downhill as the bulk of the mapping is done and everyone can concentrate their efforts on simply leaving the cave. I'm still just kind of, uh, it's a little shocking to find this up here. Just that the cave exists. And it was kind of right. This does have some of the personality qualities of those caves. It has a few of the formations. This is more. That's more branching. More branchy, right? And those are really big passages. Yeah. Uh, made me uh, have a lot of sin in my mind about this. I was jealous, covetous. What else was I? Here, we approach the small tunnel that will lead out to the main portion of the cave. So, but that was fine. I was like, fine, we'll go as a group. So then I was just like, I won't give out the GPS coordinates, but, you know, you could find it. I don't know. It's not like an, I'm going to stumble upon it. No, it's not obvious. But Gary had enough information. And then I sent you the coordinates because I thought, well... We almost had to use them. I know. The crawl is low and tough. But everything continues to be interesting, as this is the first time it is being viewed. I continue to follow Gary as he exits the tunnel crawl and I continue to scooch along with camera and light in hand. Light circles, you don't ask for coordinates. I would have given them if it was asked directly, but I, I didn't think anyone would ask unless they had a reason. Oh yeah, coming out of this is easier. Suddenly you're out and you're like, oh yeah. Did it move? Yes. <laughs> it just fell over. <laughs> Gary, the yeah, big rock was like Gary. I heard it. Yeah.
the rocks have shifted again, this time under Gary's feet. It was the same rock that had moved under my own feet on the way into the passage. Probably, under Gary's foot, it had finally settled into place. There are many stones like this, and there will never be a time where we can stop being careful where we set our feet. Oscar crawls out of the hole, laughing at the wonder of it all. I am frankly not positive that I can get out of this the same way I got in. We will find out. I think I gotta go like this. Oh yeah. It's not too bad. I we often set a story, uh, a narrative for our caving stories that are a shadow of the truth. It doesn't mean it's not true. It's just sometimes we're protecting information that we want to keep protected. A lot of people watch the channel don't live near here, but some do uh, live near where we live. And uh, just for various reasons, you know, protect people's names, protect uh, the environment, or most of the time, honestly, just for the sake of interest. You know, if we discover something amazing right away, we want to kind of move that until a later part in the uh, story so that we don't give away all the secrets right up front. This makes a better story. But it's so we're showing uh, something truthful. We're always truthful with our information, but it's not always the absolute truth. And that's just the way it has to be. But I was thinking about that because uh, just this week, uh, a group of us who are in an area that we don't normally hike, that is not really known to have uh, caves and, and uh, the, the, it's, it's out of the normal loop of where we hunt for things. A little bit, not wildly, but a little bit. And we popped into a kind of once in a generation find where <laughs> it's a big cave. And I wasn't, I didn't take any intros or extras. I didn't do any video. I did video in the cave, but I didn't do this conversation that I'm doing now. So I wanted to put this here to just kind of let you know what's been going on. Uh, this cave was uh, located and, and uh, so we got into it and then uh, the mapping crew came and we mapped it out and it's just a monster. And it's one of it. It's one of the most beautiful caves. It compares for lava tubes with anything. Uh, there's a, a way I like to describe lava tubes. I say there are some that are about as good as a lava tube gets, where you have decorations, you have formations, you have big open passages you can walk in. There's lots to see, lots to do. That's about as good as it gets. And uh, that's where this one is. This is top of the heap, one of the best caves one of the best lava tubes, maybe anywhere, certainly in this area. And we thought they had all been discovered. And we popped into this one. And everybody is kind of super surprised. And we just don't know what to make of it. Uh, it's not public information. It's not private. It's not super private. You know, it's not, a, we don't own these things. But it is a delicate cave. And so information is being quite reserved. Uh, people ask about it. We don't tell them where it is exactly. But the, but the story exists. And so I wanted to make sure that folks who uh, watch us get uh, some of that story. But the, uh, the idea of narrative versus truth leads me into some thoughts that sometimes there's like three of you out there that like to hear me ramble for so you guys, for you, uh, folks that, that like the ramblings. Uh, you're my favorite. <laughs> we all have a narrative in our lives that we actually even build for ourselves. We don't, well, some people lie to themselves, but we, we're we not often honest with ourselves. We say, I'm a good person. I'm trying to be good, whatever. Uh, 
But that's not always, that's not always the case. You know, I grew up because I had a, a positive attitude and I always thought of myself as a nice guy. But thinking of yourself as a nice person or a gentle person, that's a good way to lie to yourself when maybe you're actually being, I was actually rude to people. I actually had bad manners. I was actually not as nice as I thought I was. So I didn't understand why am I not making friends? Well, because I'm a mean little squirt, you know? Uh, little man syndrome. Trying to be aggressive and trying to be competitive. But then I wasn't a bully, so just by virtue of not being a bully, I considered myself nice. So <clears throat> I built a narrative in my mind but the kind of person I was, that everything was fine, I didn't need to change anything, the world needs to change. <clears throat> and I'm not telling anyone else how to think, but I'm telling you that I've had to learn to, every once in a while, evaluate that narrative that uh, sort of, I have a personality that people know. And then there's there's a, a guy in my heart, right, that I think this is the person I truly am. And sometimes people get to see my personality. Uh, there's a, I have a YouTube personality. I'm not quite like you see. I'm not quite like that. Uh, but you get some information. You know what my voice sounds like. You know that I like to rattle on. But you don't really have an exact idea. And if I'm not careful, I don't have an exact idea either. That's what I'm saying. Because we pretend to be something, and it's fine, pretend to be good. But we do this a lot. We, we're kind of like, okay, where am I really? Am I really as kind as I want to be? Am I as adventurous as I want to be? I think one of the modern fallacies, uh, if I may, is that if you sit at home watching videos of people doing adventurous things... Your mind thinks you're more adventurous than you actually are. Now that's known. I remember in the 90s, 1990s, they did a study and they proved that people who watched shows like Friends, people who watched television shows that had fun people interacting, evaluated their own social life as much higher than it actually was. They'd say, do you have friends? Yes. Do you have a good time? Yes. Do you feel social? Yes. But then they'd be like, how many times per month do you go out? And they'd be like, zero. How often do you talk to your friends? Once a year. So it didn't line up, but people felt like they were more social than they were, more active than they were. And this is how we, we're not trying to lie to ourselves, but if it's just my idea, is every once in a while you want to stop and think about your own, what's in your own heart. Am I living the life I want? And if not, can I do something about that? Is it possible that I could change? Am I, sometimes in my own life, what I have to do is say, am I too active? Because I don't need to go out all the time and hang out and do adventurous stuff. You've probably noticed there's a lot less videos coming through. This is based on self-evaluation that I needed to spend more time with my personal commitments with my uh, family, friends, work, labors that uh, they may not be always quite the adventure or fun as hiking and caving and making videos and being cool and being famous, but that's not really who I am. Who I am is who I am to my friends. And if I don't have time for them, if I don't have time for myself, I like to read. If I'm not reading, if I'm not devoting my life to things that I feel are truly important, then, you know, what am I doing? I'm just burning through life and time. So that's my, uh, that's the, what I was thinking about this morning is the narrative of our lives that we tell ourselves it's not always 100% truthful if you were to really and it's not necessarily healthy really dialogue write down what you really did today and what you really thought about 
<laughs> I've done that a few times and it's, it's a wild experience. We're not the people that even we think we are. So you don't have to do this, but I think for me, it is a good habit. For me, it is a good habit to every once in a while try to be real honest with myself about where the story of my life is going. There are some areas I absolutely can't control. I'm not trying to be a control freak over my own life, but I have to acknowledge, okay, I can't control this. How can I uh, live through that, live through the things I can't control better? How can I be a better uh, person about it? How can I uh, be restful in that? And, and what's the word? Uh, resigned to some of the things I can't change. You can't change things about yourself physically and sometimes mentally and you have to just not fight that. It's what we learn from caving. You get in a t tight situation. You can't fight the rocks, man. So it's not about control. It's about if you're concerned, if you're a thoughtful person and you want to live a decent life and even you want to be happy or fulfilled I don't like the tail wagging the dog I don't like getting caught up in things for too long I like to say okay what do I how do I feel like I should even from outside perspectives how do I feel like I should be living and then what can I do to better accommodate that even if sometimes I have to give up a few things that uh, I'm interested in but don't necessarily promote the best life that I should be living. I think anything else I say would be repeating myself, but you know, repetition makes a point. And uh, it's a lovely hike today. I'm gonna go, and we're visiting this cave a few times because it's uh, at a different elevation. So it will be gone probably 10 months out of the year. This is a very short window. So we're trying to take pictures of it and, and uh, look at it more. It's amazing. See you guys on the ground.